what we're doing is mixing up uh, fracture gel. This is the liquid gel concentrate that's used for slip water fracturing. There are uh, three main ingredients. There's uh, guar gum or a similar type of cellulose. There's a solvent, uh, oil-based. The most common solvent in the Halberton uh, material safety data sheets is diesel. What we'll be using is kerosene. And the third ingredient is water. Uh, so, what I have is one part of gum, two parts of solvent, and then it's a, a much larger volume of water. The fracturing uh, example we know of had almost six gallons of the concentrate, the guar and the, the solvent, mixed with a thousand gallons of water. So I have a little guar in my container, and I'm adding the kerosene, and this should form a slurry. The last batch we made, it was one to one, and it just made a paste. This is a slurry. You can't just add uh, water to guar gum. It, it, it clots. It forms a, a material that doesn't dissolve. Now, guar gum is a food additive that's used as a thickener. In the, the food industry, guar is, is preferred because it's uh, not sensitive to heat. Other type of cellulose thickeners break down you can see how it's getting thick. Break down when they're uh, mixed with, uh, exposed to heat over 160 degrees, uh, some even lower. The, the pressures underground where the gel is taking place, the, the temperatures are quite high, and then you include the, see it's very thick. Obviously, they're doing this by machine and not by hand like I'm doing. Uh, there was a spill of fracture flow back into Buckeye Creek in West Virginia in 2009. And for months afterwards, thick uh, material like this was seen on the creek. Uh, that was after the, the spill had been remediated, supposedly. Now, the material to the touch is, is uh, quite slippery. It, it, your hands retain the material. It's, it's, it's almost like an adhesive. Uh, I'm trying to break up the clots. They use special machinery that has a, a way of squeezing the material has, has a high shear. Now in the food industry, what happened is uh, about three years ago, the price of guar just went sky high. And so they've been having to, to try to find alternatives. Um, the guar was being, uh, large quantities of guar were being used by the, the uh, natural gas for, for fracturing. Now the solvents we've seen um, in material uh, safety data sheets has uh, ranged from uh, diesel, the most common by far, uh, oops, the uh, kerosene occurs on one, the uh, methanol, there's a number of other materials that have names that I won't even try to pronounce. Uh, some materials are gas oils, straight run. Uh, 
their complex hydrocarbons uh, produced in the, the cracking process of, of breaking crude petroleum to, to form gasoline and diesel. Uh, so they're, they're very similar complex hydrocarbons to, to diesel or kerosene. Uh, all of these have, have very toxic effects on humans and the environment. Uh, there are a couple of data sheets that, that, that have mineral oil, which would be less toxic. I suspect it's a lot more expensive than kerosene or diesel. Uh, as you can see, it, 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 it's quite thick. Now, by, by weight, this is about an ounce of kerosene and about a half ounce or a little more of guar. I, I don't know how they mix it up if they measure by volume or by weight. It's looking like most of the chunks are out, so I'll add some more water. The smell of the kerosene is quite strong. There's a, a sheen on the, the, the mixture here from the kerosene. Yeah, this is mixing up real good. So I'm just going to pour through this. last batch was so thick that, that it, it formed clumps, but this is mixing up very well. Uh, the liquid gel concentrate is used for fracturing coal bed methane. It's used for fracturing uh, non-shale resources, and in this state it'd be Ariscany, which is below the shale. Uh, it's quite sticky. And uh, it's used for horizontal wells where you have multiple fractures. And it's quite slippery on the hands. Now this isn't as thick as the previous batch. Uh, and I suspect that's because there's twice as much solvent so it's mixing better. Now, what we've been doing is, because the state allows the land application of fracture waste, what we're doing is, is pouring this onto vegetation, just like when it's applied. That's about as much water as I can put in. Okay. So we'll be going in a minute over to an area where we're doing the applications. What we've found is, is no obvious effects with the previous application, uh, but the, the odor of the kerosene is, is quite strong. And I'm gonna just grab a little of this. And I just wanna see if it separates over time. In West Virginia, the, uh, the flowback, along with the drill waste, can be land applied uh, if it meets certain very minimal requirements. Uh, the, the basic one is chloride and iron. Uh, there's no testing for uh, organic compounds like benzene. Uh, the flowback is land applied and generally it's done by spraying or pouring on the vegetation. We've shown last year that even at a very low concentration of a thousand milligrams per liter, chloride will have a, a very bad effect on vegetation. The state allows uh, 
application up to 12,500 milligrams per liter of chloride. So what I'm going to do is splash this on these plants uh, right in here, about a square foot, a little more. There's no restrictions in the permit to how much fluid can be applied per acre.